Hello and good evening to all of you. Good evening and welcome to Edukimi's YouTube channel. My name is Harsh Singh and in this video we shall discuss the current affairs and get the discussion for 3rd of December that is today. So before we begin the discussion all I would like to do is welcome each of you. Thank you for patiently waiting. The uh, uh, the PDF will be uploaded in a very short while. Ashish, good evening selective study. Hi Kriti. Hello Bhavani. Yes, some of you are here before uh, Sam today and Sam seems to be a little uh, haywired. Hi, Amlan. All right. Good evening. Good evening to all of you. Hi, Ajay. Good evening to you. Hello, Digvijay. Good evening. Hi, Swajil. Uh, who else is there? Hi, Nikhil. All right. So, <laughs> all right. Lot of conversations happening. Hi, Raja. Good evening to all of you. Good evening, Preeti. Hi. So let's begin the conversation for today. Today we have got uh, quite a few interesting articles and uh, we try to solve the daily news updates, some featured articles, some terms and concepts, some important editorials for you through this discussion. Right? Uh, the PDF is available on the website. Thanks for this update. Thank you, Preeti. All right. So what do we have on the Gazette today? Today we have some important articles from the snapshot. The first one is a bill which has been passed in one of the houses of the parliament assisted reprodu reproductive technology regulations bill so art bill here we will understand what has been the chief component of uh, this particular bill how does it differ from surrogacy bill and what are the intricate de details about it so this is an important legislation which has been passed now very important for medical industry in india the second one is a study on state debt to GDP ratio, right? What is the present state debt to the GDP of the country ratio? All right, here we go. The champion is here. <laughs> All the people have been waiting for somebody here. National, and that was not me. National Multi-Dimensional Poverty Index. This is an index which has been released for the first time by Niti Aayog uh, on the parameters of the survey conducted just a few uh, weeks back, right? So this is the first time the National Multidimensional Poverty Index has been released. That is for uh, uh, the country and uh, uh, the district-wise repos of, of multidimensional poverty in India. This day in history dedicated to International Day of Persons with Disabilities, Differently Abled People, the Vyangjan. Featured news is on pre-legislative consultation in our country. Right? This is something that has to be uh, promoted in our country where a bill before getting introduced in the parliament must must go through process of consultations not only before uh, uh, the legislature right but also amongst people also amongst uh, different kind of groups civil society groups we will understand what is the present situation of uh, bills how they are introduced in a, in a country what is the process of pre-legislative consultation what are its advantages what are the issues associated how should india go ahead with the scheme right this is in the featured news after the discussion on uh, the current affairs video the image of the day is on hornbin festival hornbin festival where is it celebrated with state it is actually actually happening uh, these days 10 days of festival Terms and concepts that we discussed today are first one, national wind solar hybrid hybrid policy. The second one is G20 Troika. Now India is one of the parts of this Troika, a special group inside G20. Why we will understand. Smile scheme in news lately and Facebook protect, a new measure that Facebook is introducing to protect people from uh, online, uh, you know, online thefts, online frauds on Facebook. Editorials of the day. Editorials of the day are uh, first semiconductor strategy in the country. The second one is on green revolution, right? 100 years of uh, the birthday of Vargas Kurian, and we will understand the difference between green revolution and uh, and white revolution, right? So uh, then the third one is on China in South Asia. What are how is China expanding and how other countries need to uh, proportionally uh, you know uh, re renew their own measures. We will understand the semiconductor strategy in detail so that we we completely understand you know uh, we are able to prepare a complete theme around semiconductor industry in our country today's case study is on a conservation strategy which sometimes does uh, turn into something devastating it is from tamil nadu itself on water conservation all right so uh, let's start the discussion nagaland yes nagaland is the state rajas says that babani preeti Amlan and Kriti, all of you. Preeti, it's Nagaland. Absolutely. 
So uh, first snapshot is on ART technology. Now there is a prime difference between ART assisted reproductive technology and surrogacy. Surrogacy bill was uh, introduced in the parliament and it received some assent at some stages. However, it is uh, still pending and now we also have assisted reproductive technology regulation bill. Here we will understand what is the difference between surrogacy, what is ART and uh, what uh, what are the kind of uh, different uh, you know uh, features of these specific bills right. Before that both of these uh, technologies surrogacy technology and assisted reproductive technology they are very much prospering in India and because of this India has received tourism international medical tourism to the level that uh, this has also touched ethical domains ethical domains to what level should surrogacy be practiced to what level should art, uh, the assisted reproductive technology be practiced and that is why the government had to in introduce a bill for uh, each of them right so uh, this is the context in which india has introduced this bill should we commercialize uh, these kind of uh, uh, you know things like uh, surrogacy should there be commercialization of assisted reproductive technology who all can avail these kind of uh, scientific developments this is what has been largely declared in the bill right so let's understand uh, each of them right so first of all art just try to de decipher through the words itself surrogacy that means uh, assisted somebody else is assisting uh, you know somebody else is participating so surrogate is participation of an individual whereas art assisted reproductive uh, reproductive technology it does not necessarily mean that somebody else is participating they can be just two people here getting involved and they have they are receiving some kind of assistance in reproductive technology right so this bill while the bill that has been introduced right now and it has received some uh, parliamentary assent this bill is on the technological interventions the first bill surrogacy bill is also about involvement of persons it is more about this and this is more about what kind of assistance can be received multiple kind of assistances right so largely the art bill talks of safe and ethical practices right while going through assisted reproductive technology registration of all those places which carry out art right so uh, these are this is the prime difference but we will get into more intricacies as well so uh, there is something called as uh, gamete donation there is something called as intrauterine insemination and in vitro fertilization now uh, these are different terms they all receive uh, some degree of authenticity through art bill right so while two people are married a husband and a wife and one of them is not able to produce the egg right the only when the uh, eggs of both of them fertilize with each other do they form the uh, the egg of the child right the, the the life is born now if one of the people are not able to produce the egg then this can also be donated by somebody else so uh, they can be a donor also they can be a donor so the rights of the donors will be protected through this bill right so we will also have donor banks if you watch what wiki donor is about you can also get into donation of um, uh, semen right so this is one of the components of uh, the new bill assisted reproductive technology are we not assisting we are so we are talking of gamete donation the second one is insemination of uh, the cell that is finally formed now there are times when uh, the fertili fertilization fertilization that means uh, uh, the involvement of both these cells they it does not happen inside the body it, it is not feasible there are physiolog physiological challenges there are follicles inside a female body and these follicles sometimes do not stick to uh, to the organ inside because of which the fertilization and the process which which uh, you know uh, uh, which begins there it cannot be carried out so fertilization is carried out outside the human body and then the cell the newborn cell is reintroduced in the body it can be reintroduced in the same female body later it can be reintroduced in a surrogate mother as well remember that so while it is introduced in a in the same female body the uh, after in vitro fertilization that means outside in vitro means outside the person in a test tube in a lab right so this insemination this is the second part right so first part is donation second part is in vitro fertilization and the third reintroduction could be the insemination so these are the three things that are used 
in ART, assisted reproductive technology. See, all of these stages we are receiving some assistance. And when the egg is finally reintroduced in the body, it can be the same female's body whose egg has been taken or it can be reintroduced into the body of another person who, who could act as a surrogate mother, right? So this is a different uh, bill altogether, different law to be passed. Right now, these three important features covered in this particular bill, right? So, uh, let us understand what is the difference. So, while we understand what is surrogacy, we should also know who are the people who are able to, uh, you know, uh, take these kind of benefits. So, first of all, since surrogacy was becoming very, very uh, commercial in India, therefore, the government, one thing it did was to ban commercial surrogacy. Now, people cannot come from abroad and uh, say one poor person from India should bear their child. This was unethical. There were times when the female who was bearing the child, an Indian female, poor female who was bearing the child, their insurance was not covered by the foreigners or there was a middleman, middle person involved and they would take a huge amount of money. So, while this became commercial, this also, uh, you know, led to uh, the dangers of the health to the surrogate mother. This is one issue. Now, there were times when the baby born in surrogacy, that baby would be deformed. There would be issues with the baby. In this case, the parents, foreigner parents would not take the baby from uh, the mother, surrogate mother. There were legal complications. Not only that, uh, since this was becoming commercial and India went ahead with ethical practices, see, this led to proliferation growing of India's commerce itself. And India uh, was a good country for this kind of commerce, but government said we will prohibit this. So no commerce would be done. This is what the government had said initially. Now, this kind of surrogacy can be done only when the couples are heterosexual. This was in the bill. A male and female only should be participants when this surrogacy is done. When they are unable to bear the child for five years, they try for five years, cannot bear the child, then only they can bear. And this has to be altruistic. Altruistic means no money has to be given. No finances have to be exchanged here. Although this lady's treatment will be borne by the people, but it will be altruistic based, right? So no poor person will be exploited for this. Along with this, some relative, in that case, some relative only can assist at some particular age group, right? So these were the conditions for surrogacy bill. And when we come on to assisted reproductive technology bill, now this is where the third person is not always required. Only two people are required. So, um, there are times when third people may be required if surrogacy is done, if uh, donation of sperm is, uh, you know, uh, into, into also action. And what are the kind of devices we will use? Who are the people who are going to uh, do these kind of uh, uh, lab testing and lab work? Those people will be registered. Also, there is something also related to gender here, right? Gender bias can also be found out. So that is the reason that uh, it needs to be regulated, right? So uh, this is the difference between these two particular bills. All right. So we will also have ART banks, right? So this is the place where uh, the donors can uh, send in their eggs and they can be donated, right? The donor have, have to be medically tested. They have to be safeguard procedures. For example, insurance of those people getting involved. So this is the uh, introduction of these two bills in the country it has been opposed because uh, we are not uh, letting people so for art a single man cannot be cannot uh, you know get into art assisted reproductive technology whereas a female can a female can get a donor and get to have this uh, you know insemination done artificially but uh, a male individual cannot do that similarly homosexual couples have also questioned this kind of bill passes. So, this is completely not inclusive in nature, but at least we are progressing. We are uh, regulating this kind of technology. Second snapshot is on uh, uh, Manju, Manjunath. Hi to you. All right. I have not seen this movie Digvijay, Mimi. Uh, second snapshot is on RBI study on state debt to GDP ratio. RBI has released a report, a very lengthy report. And this is not a report. It is just an amalgamation of statistics about all the sectors in the country, all the sectors and state-wise sectors, agriculture and in agriculture various fragments and then we have uh, um, industrial sector and then we have uh, service sector of all the states. What is the level of commerce and then what is the kind of deficit that these sectors are facing, investment that have come into different states. 
and uh, uh, Gujarat happens to be one of the state which has uh, increased its industrial output gross value added at max. So Gujarat is one of those states and um, uh, that particular report is also associated with the kind of debt these states have had. Now if you see the overall debt to GDP in India, ideally it was supposed to be 40 for the seven central government and 20 for the state government, 20%, 20% debt of uh, the states combined together and 40% of debt for the central government, so totaling around 60%. And these, the government was around achieving this, government was around 66% of total debt, internal debt, internal, uh, internal debt for the country. But because of COVID, this debt rose to around 60% and this went on to 30% plus, all states inclusive. So we have uh, all the countries, their debt level jumped and so did other states level also. So the effective debt to GDP ratio of states has increased. Now when the debt has increased, a couple of things, instead of looking at these uh, smaller data, uh, year wise data, we should analyze a couple of things that uh, we have read in a few editorials, the amount of money that has been spent by the government, state governments, that could get into capital expenditure or revenue expenditure, two ways. Spending on revenue expenditure is not very advantageous and spending on capital expenditure will yield, will lead to better returns. One unit of uh, rupees spent in capital expenditure can lead to four to five rupees of creation in the coming years, not in the immediate year, but in the coming years. This is, the, this is the efficiency of a capital expense, expen, uh, expenditure done. So that is why that kind of expenditure is important. The debt, the debt to GDP ratio, they are largely controlled with the help of an act called as FRBM Act, Fiscal Responsibility and Budget Management Act. Now this act is passed by the parliament and this act is the one which is the guiding force of how much is the maximum amount of debt that a state or the center should be able to take and what are their targets. Now when they have started to expend more because of COVID times, because of increased health expenditure, increased policing ex expenditure, increased amount of budget for um, the food supplies to people and various other services, infrastructure development, creation, all the countries are, all the industries are facing uh, issues. So taxation has been reduced at multiple places and there are so many sectors we have studied, electricity sector, uh, aviation sector, hotel industry, many of them have been given rebates. Where from? We are talking of the fiscal deficit here. So uh, when this is the fiscal deficit that these uh, states have gone through, then the government also has to start uh, consolidating its deficit and decrease the amount of deficit in times of come. This is the act, FRBM Act, which is the one responsible for uh, giving targets how much reduction should be there. So right now, the central government is going through the fiscal deficit of, of around 9%, 9%. It effectively means that in 100 rupees that uh, we are able to uh, get in, we are spending 109 rupees, right, per annum. So we are spending more than what uh, we get. And this 9 rupee that we are taking as loan from somewhere or the other, this is also incurring interest, no, per year interest. We are always living in deficit and this needs to be controlled, right? So this is why this editorial, this article becomes important. The article says that third tier of uh, the government, government, that is the local government, this plays an important role. Now you should start linking these articles. Yesterday only we spoke about the third tier, especially with relate, related to uh, health sector. So in health sector, the urban areas, they're not getting the funds, rural areas are still getting some funds. And if you talk of the third sector, this becomes very important because during these times, the governance in the third tier structure is the one which is playing important role because now is the time to act, executive action. And these are the places where action is happening. The state level and the central level, they are primarily for designing the policy, how it is to be executed. Execution is done by the third tier. And therefore, empowering them becomes important, giving them autonomy, functional autonomy, financial autonomy, functionaries autonomy uh, and, and, uh, uh, and, and multiple hands to work with. So uh, this is the reason that uh, this component has been recommended as uh, one that should be given stress on third tier of the government. All right. There are many mechanisms through which the states can take short term loans. Also special drawing facility ways and means advances some advances they can take for a quick amount of time. 
right so uh, this is how they can act for a quicker amount of time if they need some money in urgent supplies okay uh, so one example is of distribution companies power distribution companies we have discussed that quite a few times all right uh, Preeti asks, why is the women age eligibility till 50 but male age eligibility is up to the age of 55? Now, uh, the, the age of uh, puberty for males and females is largely same. The time when they emotionally, uh, physiologically, sexually start to grow as an adult, that is around 10 to 12 years of age, right? So, uh, this is similar age. But the time when they uh, achieve uh, uh, menopause, females meno achieve menopause is around the age of 45, 50, right? Beyond this, they will not be able to give childbirth. So this is the age given for females around 50 years of age and for 55, because they, <laughs> they still can have, you know, uh, they, they can still donate sperms. This is one way you can understand it, right? So uh, snapshot free is on National Multidimensional Poverty Index. National Multidimensional Poverty Index. Before getting into the details of this index, which has been released by uh, Niti Ayo, also dependent on National Family Health Survey, we should understand uh, what uh, graph it has shown. A beautiful graph of uh, the present multidimensional poverty in our country. And mind you, we have covered multidimensional poverty in a featured news. So just type multidimensional Poverty and uh, Educami on YouTube, you will be able to find a complete article talking about how multidimensional poverty is calculated. It has three parameters, health, education and, uh, uh, you know, uh, life. Another parameter on the kind of, uh, uh, you know, physical needs and, you know, devices that we own. So three parameters largely all given equal weightage, one third of the weightage and effective weightage is calculated now each of them have different so total 10 parameters are taken 10 of them and out of 10 the scoring is done here and if the scoring is below one third one third then the people fall in uh, multi-dimensional poverty category now why 10 parameters have been taken this has been diversified the number of parameters have been diversified for example if you see the kind of uh, uh, assets that people own they will talk about a parameter where people have, if people have uh, pakka houses or not. They will talk about if person has electronic gadgets at their home or not, TV or fridge at home or not, or a full wheeler or at all or not. If they are using gas connections or traditional gas supplies. So if they are using traditional power, this will lead to, uh, you know, getting them less marks here in, in the kind of assets that they own. So, looking at health and education parameters, similar, uh, you know, quantitative, qualitative features will be there. And this will be able to, through this, we'll be, we will be able to calculate the multidimensional poverty of an individual. So, uh, looking at the, uh, the complete graph for our, our country, percentage of people who are multidimensionally poor, multidimensionally poor, less than 10% are these particular states. Less than 10% people who are multidimensionally poor. But if you go into red, more red zones, you see places like Bihar, Jharkhand, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Assam and Meghalaya. These are, these are the uh, five, six states which have got uh, 30 to 40 to even more than 40 percent people who are multidimensionally poor. So this graph becomes very handy when you look at the development, the overall development and poverty scenario in our country. South India is largely secure. The central India belt is the one which is not very much secure and North India, Northeast India provides a diverse uh, picture here. Again, the northern part are more secure than the central part, right? So a very good uh, pictorial that you can use in your examination. Now, this is something that can be, you know, completely drawn when we talk about, when we talk about poverty in a country, when we talk about multidimensional poverty, social sector development, right? This can directly be indicated. So getting back to our uh, article. Here we have again demonstrated through the same, uh, you know, 10 parameters, the same thing that we had uh, used while we spoke of multidimensional poverty, the featured news, same thing here. And the ranking of states and union territories have happened here. I've shown you the picture itself. You would be able to understand Bihar and Jharkhand stand at the lowest positions. Certain recommendations regarding health, education, living standards have been given here, right? 
So clean cooking fuel should be used, sanitation, electricity should be there. We have spoken about sanitation in detail in one of the, one of the articles, right? So even when India has been declared as, uh, you know, uh, open defecation free, but uh, the practical reality suggests something else. Similarly, clean cooking fuel, do we have some programs running where the government is trying to give people uh, the gas supply, the gas supply and one gas stock free of cost? Yes, we have an Ujwal scheme. Electricity, we also have a scheme for electricity distribu distribution around the whole country, but the criteria here again is very much flawed. Only few places in a small village, if they are electrified, the complete village will be assumed to be electrified. So there are flaws here as well and that is why some uh, some kind of recommendations have been given here right so this is the update about uh, this particular article there have been uh, recommendations on school attendance drinking water bank accounts and housing now do remember we have covered school attendance also in details right though we have a uh, number of uh, uh, people who students who are enrolled in schools but the quality of school uh, education is not good retention is not strong so recommendations there COVID impact, the second one. Drinking water, do we have a mission on drinking water? We have covered. Yes, we have covered the drinking water mission in uh, rural areas. Can somebody name the scheme for drinking water mission? Bank accounts, right? Uh, bank account, there have been good recommendations by various committees saying that uh, the number of defunct accounts are few and housing schemes, urban housing and rural housing. We have covered the issues in rural housing schemes also. We have, come, we have also covered one complete feature news on uh, the housing scheme in urban areas, right? A model act, model tenancy act in urban areas. So can somebody name the, na the name of the scheme on drinking water? So somebody has definitely helped me here. Uh, Ravi says standard of living. Yes, that was the third parameter, standard of living. Uh, Nikhil Yadav says Pehel, Pehel. Pehel is the direct benefit transfer scheme, all right. And what about uh, scheme in water? Conservation. We have studied that. Jaljeevan mission, absolutely. That is the mission. So try relating to those schemes then and, and revise those schemes immediately because uh, this is what effectively is your question paper about eventually. Uh, this day in history dedicated to International Day of Persons with Disabilities, right? So, uh, while this was the day, December 3rd, 1992, declared as International Days of, uh, uh, you know, for the persons with disability, India also has got a huge number of disabled people, but uh, we have not demarcated them, we have not tagged them, and we have not provided them these benefits that they deserve, right? So, more than 1 billion people are differently abled or disabled in some or the other regard. Don't only look at physical disability. There are new parameters of counting the disabled persons. We we'll look at mental dis disability. There are a lot of people who are at a stage of uh, emotional disbalance as well. This might not count as a disability because uh, of varied levels of uh, people, right? So it has to be certified and this also has to be certified. In fact, physical disability also has to be certified. Just that this is visible, clearly visible from uh, perception. That is why people differentiate and relate to physical disability more than the other kind of disabilities, all right? International Day of Persons with Disabilities, uh, covered under which act or which ministry? What is the ministry looking at differently abled people? Anybody here? Please message. All right. Uh, then we have the feature news for today, institutionalizing the pre-legislation consultation in India. We will understand what is the present situation of legislation, how it is formed, do we need pre-legislative consultation, looking at the kind of laws we are passing, not even consulting the parliament, not even looking at uh, the uh, permanent committees which are established to look into these kind of laws and not to talk of uh, consulting people. So what is this ideal process, how it should be carried about in India, what are the issues associated, what are the advantages, what should India do in a situation like this, we will study in the future news, okay, after this video. Then we have Pond Bin festival, festival being celebrated in uh, Nagaland, absolutely correct. This is a 10 day festival and you should look at how Hornbill looks like. I wanted to show you an image, uh, a bird with a yellow beak, right? Hornbill, very popular in Northeast and uh, people celebrate this for 10 days in uh, Nagaland, right? Image of the day here. 
and it invites good amount of tourism in that particular state. So tourism means finances. Finances means economy and uh, benefits to the people. All right. Social justice and empowerment. Absolutely true. That is the ministry under which differently able people are taken care of. National wind solar hybrid policy. Now this is a new policy that has been uh, declared by the government. The prime agenda is to integrate wind energy and solar energy at places where both of them are active, right? So uh, while wind energy and solar energy, both of them do not provide uh, sustainable sources of energy at the same time, yet if both are integrated, there will be more power generation through renewed capacities. And there was another news related to this uh, of, uh, you know, in today's newspaper itself. That is that India has already achieved uh, the capacity of the capacity of 40% uh, of renewable uh, energy generation, 40%. And India needs to carry this on for the coming nine years as well, up to 2030. So uh, the current renewable capacity generation is around 160 gigawatt, around 165, 166 gigawatt. And the total energy generated in our country is around 400 gigawatt, minus, 400 minus, around 390 gigawatt. So three, 160 around is what we achieve from solar, wind, uh, hydro, geothermal and the small hydro all taken together, right? So when, see, I had shared with you earlier, if we divide India into grids, right? There, if See, this is one of the schematics you can use while you talk of India, north, central, west, south and east. So north India is the one which is quite uh, distant as far as the energy production centers are concerned. Central India and East India are the places from where coal is produced. And coal is used in power generation. So these places are largely in power surplus capacity. South India also and West India also, right? We also have alternate means, since this is coastal also, there are alternate forms of power available, both the coast. But North India largely is the one which remains a little segregated. And that is why power deficit in North India is high. Now, if you look at the solar potential of North India and the wind potential that can be integrated, this is one thing. And we can also have a complete India, a pan-India grid in which if there is a short supply in North and there is a good supply in the central India, they can, they can transfer power immediately. So that is why we want to talk of a hybrid policy, hybrid policy. And especially in regard to wind and solar, because sun does not uh, come up during night times and there is no wind during the complete 24 hours. If we integrate them, we will be able to achieve more efficiency in places where uh, there is shortfall of energy. All right. And also distant places, for example, Ladakh, places in uh, uh, Gujarat, we are talking of uh, Kutch area, places in Northeast, places which are unreachable. Right. So this is an update. G20 Troika. G20 Troika is uh, a special group within the G20 group. G20 group largely has G7 countries and then we have Russia and then uh, 12 more countries, right? So 12 more countries and these G8 countries, they constitute G20. The group of powerful and emerging economies which uh, the world, uh, you know, looks, for, looks up to. So Troika is that small union of countries which have taken the leadership of G20 in this year, the last year and the upcoming year. Upcoming year leadership of G20 will be with India. Last year was with Italy and this year with Indonesia. So they get to decide a lot of agenda of G20 and India has now joined that group because India will be heading it in the next year, right? Uh, notably, Russia was a member of uh, G8, but G8 has been significantly its significance has reduced because of annexation of Crimea in the year 2014. And after that, G7 was the prime group of countries, very important uh, group of countries. And there have been tensions between Russia and uh, USA with regard to Ukraine. So very slow developments happen on that international front. There is an update of, you know, uh, one, one, uh, one small update one day, for example, Russia in talks with USA. Right, they're going to meet at some place. This is first day's update. Second day's update will be uh, Russia withdrew from the meeting. So Russia withdrew. Third day, uh, meeting will be China went and said to Russia that yes, please go ahead and go ahead and join the meeting. Fourth day, we will have another COVID and then <laughs> this meeting will be cancelled. So this is how, you know, things approach in the newspaper. Very slow flow of international news. But yes, this is the update. G Troika. Right, so emerging group of nations. You should look at this image. I am... You can pause the video later when you look at 
but you should know which are the G20 countries here, right? Do we have Saudi Arabia? That is my question to you. Do we have Saudi Arabia here? It's an important country. Do we have Iran here? Right? Do we have uh, Malaysia here? These are important questions that uh, we can ask because these are the countries uh, which are uh, doing well internationally. But my question unanswered as yet. Malaysia, is it there or not? Smile scheme. Smile scheme is a scheme for uh, the poorer persons, the beggars in our country. Notably, we had covered one of the uh, schemes like this in a case study, how Delhi government is trying to empower the poorer people, uh, empower the uh, beggars. So SMILE scheme start, stands for Support for Marginalized Individuals for Livelihood and Enterprise. Right? So SMILE scheme is for uh, you know, the poorer people. Another scheme which is looking at the people who are marginalized. So again, same ministry, Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. Right? So what are they trying to do? They are trying to uh, rehabilitate them, provide them some skills where they can utilize and work. So some basic documentation for them some education, right, skill development so that they can participate in some economic activity. It's a great scheme. You can use this uh, in a case study of social justice. All right. So do remember the name of the SMILE scheme. What are they trying to do? How are they trying to engage these beggars, give them medical support, some counseling as well so that they can improve their quality of life. And we can see everything need not be done by the government. We can also rope in the uh, communities, civil society groups, NGOs, to administer these kind of activities. Smile scheme. Facebook protect. Uh, Facebook protect is a new feature which is going to become a part of Facebook. And they are trying to uh, protect uh, some people, three kind of people, especially three kind of people, human right defenders, uh, journalists and activists, three kinds of people to begin with from state sponsored attacks, cyber threats, cyber, uh, you know, uh, any adversarial threats online. When somebody is trying to hack their uh, system, or get access to what they are doing. So this is how we are trying to protect them through Facebook Protect. So what does it do? It provides a two-factor authentication to persons. Two-factor authentication. Today, when we log on to Facebook, what is the authentication? Our password. But if the password gets hacked because the whole system is hacked, we can also have another factor for the authentication. What is that? Uh, an OTP. An OTP. So while OTP is sent on the physical phone, the uh, digital code. Uh, you know, if even if it is copied, we need another factor for authenticating. So this is another way in which Facebook is trying to uh, have more security features for people. Facebook is under attack these days because of many reasons. Uh, one reason is uh, trying to defend the rights of persons. So okay, it is working in this uh, place. Another, uh, a couple of more important things that have uh, been in the news, especially in USA also, is is Facebook trying to in India also, right? Is Facebook trying to uh, commercialize the social division in a country? Is it trying to propagate them? Now, the artificial intelligence design that uh, tries to promote uh, a specific post, it does not look into uh, the content of the post. What it promotes is what people are looking at. And incidentally, it does promote incidences of violence. It promotes those incidences which are uh, uh, against uh, uh, social cohesion. Uh, and inflammatory remarks, this is what at times the, uh, you know, the, uh, the kind of articles it promotes becomes all this. And they are not checked in time because of shortage of employees, because of uh, less regulatory framework. What has happened in India also has been flagged. What has happened? Now, when remarks are passed in local languages, local languages. Now, see, this is not a part of any conversation studies, but you must get an opinion into this. When local languages uh, remarks are passed, these are not captured by the artificial intelligence software. Even if you are typing, for example, uh, somebody is giving threats, death threats to somebody in a local language. Somebody is saying, I will steal from you, I will, I will murder you, something like that in local language. This is not captured by the artificial intelligence. And because of this, uh, this completely evades the social media, uh, you know, screening mechanism, people are the people, the physical people who are sitting in Facebook office, they are also not able to access this. It evades them and st st it still flares up the incident. And that is why Facebook is under fire from multiple angles. Okay. So this is news from Facebook. So that is why these kind of features. All right. No Malaysia and G20. Absolutely correct. No Malaysia.
All right. Then we have three editorials. Let's understand each of them. Semiconductor, a little in detail. I will quickly cover them. Let's do this. The first one is the semiconductor. All right. Let's start with this. Countering China's expanse in South Asia. Now, there is a reason why China is the country which is expanding very much in South Asia. Countries like Sri Lanka, countries like Nepal, Bangladesh, Maldives, all of them have taken loan from China. Why so? Despite of China having exploitative policies, despite knowing that China will put these countries in the a kind of deficit, a kind of debt, which these countries will not be able to repay in a longer period of time, and, uh, and this will be a trap, a uh, debt trap, why do they still get on with these kind of loans? Primarily because these states need something. They need some assistance in certain sectors, be it finances, be it infrastructure, be it technology. And China looks at the demands of these countries. This serves the demands. So that is the reason they, that they get into this kind of engagement. And is it always fruitful for that country? No, it is not. Uh, uh, there are times when uh, China engages with them. For example, if it created the friendship bridge in, uh, with the Maldives, there were threat given in Nepal as to, uh, uh, as to reporting the COVID diseases in the country. And in Sri Lanka, uh, while it uh, created a railway network, in Bangladesh, uh, the Chinese embassy was not happy when uh, there were uh, you know, expressions of Tibetan uh, movement. So, China also retorts in one way or the other. See, what are the various ways in, in which China is trying to help these countries? China is trying to help through infrastructure, or finances, development, and through this, slowly and steadily, it will get into the politics of the country, social dynamics of the country. It might even try to give bribe to people. This has happened in countries, and Chinese companies have been banned because they have been giving bribes to uh, you know uh, people and functionaries. This is how international politics happens. They start with funding finances, trying to help in development, and they slowly and steadily start to control the complete development agenda through what they want to do, want to do right? This has happened in many South, South American economies. This has happened in Central Asia. This has happened in Europe as well. And most of the countries there would be aligned. They would not be non-aligned. So European countries and South American countries, they would be, non, uh, they would be aligned to either America or uh, USSR erstwhile. And, and we see this happening in South Asia as well. So, uh, Sheikh Hasina and uh, uh, the other lady, um, what's her name? Sheikh Hasina and the other lady who was in power, uh, was the ex-Prime Minister of Bangladesh. They both are, Khalida Zia, Khalida Zia, they both are in power at some point of time. Sheikh Hasina is in favor of India, Khalida Zia is anti-India. See that? Similarly, when we have Maldives, there are two governments there. And when one comes to power, this is pro-India and the other one is not pro-India. Same, similar thing happens in Nepal. Very similar thing happens in uh, uh, Sri Lanka as well, right? So, there are governments which, and Nepal as well, yes. There are governments which take votes on anti-India policies, right? While they declare that. And there are countries which, uh, which have parties which take votes on anti-China policies also. So, uh, how should India, how should developing countries like India, um, regional hegemon and in country like America also participate here because uh, there are interest of these countries if we serve their interest they will definitely readily participate so what is the interest here the interest is to start engaging with them show an intentment of engagement show an intent of engagement right so America initiated a summit for democracy a summit for democracy 50s of countries participated and I have checked the link Quite a lot of countries participated in the summit for democracy, but America did not invite Sri Lanka and Bangladesh here. Now, this is where the article says that it should have invited these two countries also, because this is how we are trying to engage the countries. No, why not involve uh, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh also? They also are in need of funds, development, infrastructure projects, and finances. So, uh, we have to engage these countries. This is first thing, and uh, these are the countries which have uh, you know where you invest these. Investments are low stake but high returns because China is not doing very well in these countries as well, right? So, uh, we can begin by giving them, you know, some mechanisms for oversight of projects, only project oversight, right? If China is, you know, doing the project, a mechanism for oversight of that project. 
how should we screen investments which investment is good which is bad how should we review the contract with a particular country with a particular party right so uh, these are the important ways in which we can begin also people to people contact that needs to be increased contact with media civil society they will automatically increase good will get will get generated and we'll be able to counter china's influence in these countries right all right so nikhil says the word for this is neo colonialism absolutely um sam says the international journal told facebook is promoting riots these are the kind of allegations and see uh, not everything can be, can be justified but when uh, there are uh, reasons given as to facebook did not have employees enough to understand the local language that is justified the artificial intelligence is not ethical in nature it does not understand which articles to promote it just knows that if more people are watching it it needs to be put high on uh, you know facebook recommended watches simple the second one is a very important editorial it's on india's uh, 20 year semiconductor strategy right important one so uh, this is a quick understanding of the semiconductor industry this is a high stake industry with a huge amount of investment and this is a multi uh, multi billion industry established and it this is about supply chain so the first part of an industry this is a possible question any year in the in, in the coming 5 10 years possible question in optional or or gs as well so the first part of the industry is about designing designing on computer how chips need to be designed the second part of the industry is uh, fabricating the wafers these are the wafers the, the the semiconductors on which the transistors or chips are laid the third part is the fabrication of the chips itself the fourth part third and fourth you know included together the this part this part is testing testing of the semiconductor and then we have packaging and then we dispatch it so that they can be installed in the other white goods or devices electronics right now how can india participate in this industry this is a multi multi billion dollar industry and in fact some of the equipments in this industry especially in the core fabrication industry the equipment itself cost billions of dollars it takes 10 billion dollars to have a fab industry a fab industry where we manufacture these kind of uh, uh, semiconductor uh, devices wafers and establish the whole network 10 billion dollars and this is the kind of funding that uh, needs to be put in countries india needs india already has expertise in chip designing its software engineers already has expertise but india has, has been trying to get into this industry in its supply chain but it has been led by other countries taiwan south korea japan china in fact each of these countries specialize in some of the other domain the tiger economies in southeast asia they are also a part of it so india tries to get into it but india has failed miserably four times this is what the editorial says this is the fifth time we have started to fund having a semiconductor industry in india what are we starting with we are we are starting with the fab industry fabrication of the vapor industry this is this is requiring less technology this requires less kind of investment and we can also become as part of the complete supply chain of the industry and then after this product is made these high technology industries we cannot afford this item will be exported to south korea japan or usa and then we can test or we can package now these industries are also not indian right so while we look at lg lg company where does it belong to whirlpool which country does it belong to samsung right all the white goods are largely these companies yes voltas is indian but uh, tata product but lg is not uh, samsung is not samsung south korean lg south korean whirlpool american what about um, uh, there are various other companies you know many of them belong to southeast asia or eastern economies right similarly for the car companies mobile phones all of them manufactured in uh, china many of them right so apple manufactured in china samsung manufactured in korea so eventually they end up in these countries india need to be an integral part of these industry just that much to begin with will be suffice right i just demonstrated this part of you so that you can understand the editorial here right so the first part is chip design then we have component designing component making fabrication chip assembly testing packaging and marketing and then sales right and this is a capital intensive industry skill intensive industry in which india needs to put in lot of skills and capital it cannot be done at all stages india cannot become atmanirbhar in chip industry completely india can i only 
certain uh, components for example wafer manufacturing or chip designing and india can pass it on to another country right so uh, for this india requires a strategy india needs to have a 20 year 20 year strategy single strategy for 20 years rather than 21 year strategies this is the one first plan then we need to start funding those industries we need to start calling in those companies which can uh, provide this technology to us right so that we can collaborate and enter into this technology as we start providing them more finances there will be more confidence building with confidence building there will be better partnership and india can become expertise in some speciality sectors then india must also reduce taxation now if taiwan is one country from where these products are manufactured and if taiwan is uh, actually one country where uh, good manufacturing contract manufacturing of electronic chip happens now when we are importing these products for, from taiwan we are imposing good amount of taxation right import duty if we are imposing import duty finally these products which are created in india they will be costlier now this is what is called as inverted duty structure while india wants these products to be economical the final taxation is less they are increasing the taxation on the smaller components this is not productive so why, how, why will taiwan want to export these products to india in the supply chain we need to reduce taxation this is one india has also participated in a new new uh, initiative quad semiconductor supply chain initiative so all the four quad countries they have said we want to make ourselves resilient to china to china supply chain of semiconductor nowadays we are seeing this shortage of semiconductor just like there was energy and coal shortage so this semiconductor shortage has led to the white good industries uh, curtailing their production in fact uh, the plants the uh, the auto plants they have also curtailed their production be it heavy uh, you know uh, heavy devices heavy heavy vehicles or the uh, smaller vehicles so uh, this is the reason that india can uh, match up the 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 countries of the likes of taiwan south korea and other quad economies and be a part of them right and uh, this is how india can become an export oriented industry in the electronics good industry all right samsung is south korean okay absolutely correct so you can well imagine where is india as a leader india is not a participant in semiconductor industry but semiconductor industry in india even despite the slow pace it is destined to grow two times up to 500 billion dollars by the year 2025 imagine that even despite you know such challenges even despite we not being able to own such high technology laser guided um, semiconductor manufacturing industry okay white touch uh, to a refreshed green revolution now this talks about uh, white revolution largely uh, it has been 100 years of the birthday of uh, Varghese Korean the father of white revolution in, in our country and he also initiated Amul, Anand Milk Union Limited, right, a cooperative. How is uh, Amul or the White Revolution different from the Green Revolution? There are many ways in which they are different. Green Revolution was technology driven, White Revolution was people driven. Green Revolution focused at um, more efficiency and food security, food security, food security, do remember. But White Revolution focused on the people. On the people and making uh, you know their, their them as important stakeholders in uh, the enterprise right increasing farmers income this is what white revolution was about not only that if you look at green revolution there was promotion of monoculture why because if you have fertilizer industry if we have big dams big dams all of them are going to create efficiency in production of certain kind of crops only so this actually led to monoculture but why but white revolution it led to diversification in agriculture right so these are the prime differences and Varghese Korean he went to USA he studied the whole model and uh, he tried to understand what can be the best way of uh, uh, having the white revolution in our country right he was also in favor of cooperative movement in our country and Amul was the first uh, a very good role model of cooperative industry in our country and even abroad this is better than the corporate model of USA and better than the uh, USSR model of uh, co corporate uh, cooperatives, right? So while the state, while the state or society owns it, this is not as efficient for the individual. The best model worked out was the middle path that was the cooperative industries. So uh, this is what forms the component of 
this particular editorial it says that irma irma uh, this is an organization right the uh, rural the institute of rural management in anand and this creates managers managers people who do mba from here they understand and they try to initiate and propagate the farm producer organizations people who are working in cooperative societies they want to encourage them and they want to initiate those ways in which farmer can double their income this was the same day the birthday of uh, vargis kurin was the same day where one year of the farm movement it uh, it got uh, you know completed in delhi so uh, while we talk of uh, increasing the farmers income there has to be new mechanism new devices which have to be strategized what can they be like they have to be local system solutions they cannot be global or national solutions they cannot be made scalable right now because those solutions cooperative solutions may not be able to compete with them also providing uh, scalability is about financing in the beginning and finances may not be available at scalable levels so we have to provide local solutions this is one thing we have to focus on inclusion and equity what are we talking of we are talking of in new ways of increasing farmers income right so because green revolution led to monoculture and it didn't increase farmers income this cannot be used in white revolution we have to include people include the lower people and women especially because many people who are a part of this cooperative movement are women so local systems is one and then practical and usable solutions sustainable transformation and evolution so there has to be step by step transformation with sustainable solutions right and um, people ownership becomes important this is not about usa model of corporate ownership or ussr model where the state owns it and people are mere working for it both were efficient but when we want to increase people's income it is people ownership which is, which becomes prime so this is the third editorial for today and then comes uh, the case of uh, devastation see when we have storm water drainages if we know what is storm water drainages storm water drainages are those kind of drainages which are established along the road and they th this is the place where water you know finds an inlet and along with these pipes they went out into the sea channels or rivers this is the channel through which we are not establishing uh, water recharge facilities so many of these storm water drainages were installed in chennai they did not lead to level uh, you know level rise of water the water table rise and uh, this is how it has not been beneficial at many other places so this has actually led to anti harvesting anti water harvesting processes this is not something a model like a model which can be emulated right so this is something that we learn from uh, places now if you see if you can relate to this chennai floods you might think that uh, this is a more efficient process but on the other hand imagine a storm water drainage getting clogged imagine if uh, clogged because of plastic because of uh, uh, more uh, silting right so because of these measures if the storm water drainage it gets clogged it gets jam packed water does not flow and we have complete concrete structure so because of this increased flooding will happen in a place like chennai this is what has happened conservation leading to devastation all right so this is the completion of uh, the uh, gazette and current affairs discussion for today this is a complete holistic uh, news that we covered do cover the key points highlight them and uh, use them in your note making make only short notes you do not have to write complete sentences i have been checking the notes of some persons somehow you all all you need to do is uh, write the key points from here right only 5 6 key points in one article you should be able to write maximum to maximum 10 key points nothing more than that many of these articles are updates of uh, of of what is uh, an important uh, theme itself so let me give you a quick example here when we talk of uh, uh assisted reproductive technology and uh, uh, surrogacy bill two different bills so these come under social sector under your pile of social issues you can put uh, bills right or you can go to polity book polity file of yours and you can cover this bill and write a very short keynote what are the key provisions of the bill what are the advantages what are the shortcomings that's it and if this update does not cover it try to cover it from searching on internet right this update may not be about that particular thing that you are looking for but every article every article be it assisted reproductive te technology or debt to ratio right in general this is only an update on a bigger topic 
right so uh, on a bigger topic debt to jet, uh, gdp ratio this is only a small update so at least make a theme so that when you are getting updated you you just write the key points right there but there has to be head and tail of it somewhere or sometime when you revise them you should be able to understand what is the meaning of debt to gdp ratio how, what is the percentage that is ideal and what are the issues associated with debt to gdp ratio and how they need to be curtailed right same goes for national multidimensional poverty index questions won't be asked on this this is only an update on the poverty status in the country this is one of the ways it can be calculated so while under uh, the theme of poverty in social issues you can cover this you can cover with a map and that will be all or two or three important pointer highlights if you write whatever i am speaking that will not be uh, you know the most appropriate as far as reproduction of it in the examination is concerned all you have to do is write down few important things what are they keywords just select keywords five six keywords this is one data points some important data because that is what will serve you know credibility to your answer then some cases some good case studies from these articles itself you will be able to pick up and examples examples are cases in one sentence one phrase and case study are you know three four you know in a block way and then you write three four points so this is what you have to cover from anything that you read anything for upsc and be it these articles also right so this is what is required uh, this is friday we will see you monday evening but we also have a feature news to cover quickly right so uh, digvijay says uh, green revolution leads to environmental degradation all right amlan says uh, Hornbill festival is also known as festival of festivals. Okay, all right, guys. So thank you for being a part. Uh, I will want to watch you in the uh, other video that is for uh, the featured news for today. An important uh, discussion on pre-legislative consultation process. If you like this video, share some love through thumbs up and likes. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video immediately, short after this. Thank you, thank you, Preeti. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, everybody.